Nathan, I can't believe it. It's our 50th episode. And wow. I know, right? We were now we're two old hands at this podcasting game. Bring out the strippers. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nathan, that's a very funny joke, but I'll tell you what's not a joke <laughs> is there is an amazing I have I have prepared an amazing reveal for the end well, of this oh, episode. And wait, some, wait a second. some think some think that it is going to be the biggest surprise in podcast history. When I heard okay. about it, I went I thought to myself, Goinkers. How did you hear about it before I did? I have been, my street team hmm? has been working <laughs> okay. the streets all Oh, that week. makes sense. I'm not by, I'm in Florida. Because there is evidence out there that every listener might receive a million dollars at the end of this episode. All by well, performing well, well. one weird trick that doctors don't want you to know. And that's... Five star review on podcast services. <laughs> I think doctors have been doing a great job getting people to not do that personally. Yeah, that's true. They're doing too good a job, those doctors. Because everyone should leave a five star review for Network Special, the only podcast you need to listen to to hear about the golden age of appointment based television when you had to watch what was on, when it was on. But now, thanks to the magic of the internet, we can watch these programs again and again whenever we please. And for the 50th time, my name is Zach Ryan. I'm here with my beautiful co-host. Nathan. Always good for the ramp up, Nathan. And not mm -hmm. for the 50th time, but it seems like a hundred. Just kidding, <laughs> producer. Who's in the producer booth? Jeremy Demery. There he is. Now we knew for this 50th special, we had to talk about something big. We had to talk about a ratings bonanza episode of something that everyone would remember or know about in some way if they were around. So what did we decide on? The uh, to that date up uh, that to that date the most watched <laughs> Excuse me? TV to that to uh, do that up to the up to the bang bang boogie Dr. John up here up boogie anyway up get a dub and you gonna have a bub um up to that point this was the most watched TV special in television history the mystery of Al Capone's vaults hosted presented and um hyped up by Geraldo Rivera. Geraldo? Geraldo? Geraldo. <laughs> no, you pronounced it great. Uh, <laughs> this was on April 21st, 1986 on what network? Uh, it was syndicated. Syndicated by Tribune Entertainment in a very unusual move because no network would take a chance on this, what wound up being one of the biggest live television events ever. Um, yeah. A lot of times in television, you'll hear about things getting a share, uh, which just means a percentage. And in Chicago, this had a 70 share, which means 70% of people <laughs> watched this program while it was happening. New York City, 35% of everybody watched this. And uh, all around, people have an estimate of 30 million people all tuned in to see this. And what did they tune in to see? Well... They found out that Al Capone, gangster Al Capone, old syphilis sufferer, Scarface <laughs> himself, uh, once had an office in the Lexington Hotel in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was being slated to be demolished. And while th they were, it is sad because that was a very beautiful uh, hotel from the pictures I've seen of it. Yes. They were doing tests around the hotel and they realized, hey, there are what are called sidewalk vaults in this hotel, which means that underneath the sidewalk directly outside the building, there are spaces, there's staircases that go down. Um, they're not unusual in Chicago architecture. They're usually used as storage or maybe a, an emergency exit for employees. In this case, they found out that there were walled off sections of this vault. Um, and so they then jumped to the conclusion 
that this Instantly. must be Al Capone's secret vault. What could now, be in them? Tommy guns, is- bodies, <laughs> a bazillion dollars, tax savings. <laughs> <laughs> And they promised this, that they were going to blow open this vault live on TV and show you whatever was inside. And many people said it was going to be something amazing. All right. Nathan, well, sorry. and also, um, Araldo himself uh, presents this at, as his evidence that they are actually, in fact, Al Capone's vaults. Um, his evidence is some say. Yes. <laughs> That's it. That's all the evidence he has. The words some say, I wrote these down. Some say, some think there is evidence and may have get used <laughs> a lot when describing <laughs> what you will be seeing this, tonight. This very much takes me back to one of our earlier episodes, the Alien Autopsy Factor Fiction um, a very similar vibes. Um, and the payoffs are different, but similar. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it, this, this is, this is really exciting. It's, it's all live. I don't know why they did, ha- why he chose to do this live, but, um, he did. And maybe that was the secret sauce. Well, <laughs> I, I know why they did it live. Um, but before we get into that, should we hear Geraldo in his breathless opener of talking about the mystery of Al Capone's vaults? I'm Geraldo yeah. Rivera, and you're about to witness a live television event. A massive television. concrete vault has been discovered. Some think it belonged to none other than the notorious <laughs> Al Capone. Well, tonight, for the first time, that vault is going to be open live. <laughs> Geraldo has so many teeth. He has the biggest, <laughs> he has the biggest like little line of marshmallows in that mouth I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, he's. Um, if you know who he is, what he is, this is. This is so he gets fired from ABC for criticizing them. So because they won't air a um, a story that links. Uh, that there is that the comments on that there is an affair between JFK and Marilyn Monroe. So he gets fired from them. He's wondering what he's going to do. He decides he's going to take his yacht from New York all the way to California. <laughs> he's in the Panama Canal. He gets a he gets a call from his freaking agent, and it's th- about this. Does he want to do it? And he does it. And this thing um, becomes his meal ticket. Yeah, to fame and fortune. Yeah, I mean, I was questioning Geraldo because this is before his Geraldo talk show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was kind of like, okay, so where, what, how did Geraldo spawn this odd journalist? Like, was he just always kind of like a huckster? So he was hired in 1970 for Eyewitness News in New York City. He's one of the first uh, major Puerto Rican news reporters. He is this insane investigative reporter. He turns up uh, like um, he wins a Peabody Award for talking about Stat- Staten Island's Willowick State School, uh, who was abusing. Sorry, we've had a lot of Staten Island talk behind the scenes here. Uh, actually, we, we don't need to go into it. We don't need to go into it. Producer Jeremy, you want to give your introduction for whenever no. you, uh, <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, everyone get ready for your new beloved character. Uh, producer Jeremy, what happens whenever, uh, people get greeted to Staten Island? Oh, welcome to the islands. The Staten Islands. Legalize the jar. See, that's his classic Pete Davidson impression. So I mean, it's only fair if I'm doing my Dexter, if I'm doing my Angel Batista from Dexter Morgan. <laughs> All the beloved characters are coming out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? A boot? <laughs> that was last week's. That was last week's. Oh, good callback. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Geraldo is a a serious reporter reporting on serious things. Um, 
he manages this report on the abuse of patients at Staten Island's Willowick State School is such a big deal. They wind up uh, turning the school around. Uh, he produces a concert with John Lennon to raise funds oh, for the school. Yes, like a, a two of two day concert with John <laughs> Lennon, which Geraldo introduces. Uh, he's married to Kurt Vonnegut's daughter. He champions all of these uh, liberal causes. He does a show. Oh, whoa, whoa, that's a change. Uh, he does a, a, a show on ABC. He's one of the first people to show. Uh, well, he's the first person to show the Zapruder film on TV. He is the what? first person to talk about AIDS and name AIDS as a major disease and, and inform people on it. He talks about legalizing marijuana usage. He talks about draft dodgers. And then, like you said, one day they're going to run a story, not even his story, but a story that states that JFK had an affair with Marilyn Monroe. They're not going to use it. Geraldo calls his boss a coward for not using it. He is then fired. <laughs> uh, that's in 85. And then, like you said, a year later, he is on his boat wondering what to do with his life. And he gets offered this mystery of Al Capone's vaults. They offer him 25000 to host it. He says, you have to up it to 50000 because this idea is crazy. And they do it. <clears throat> uh, this whole show was cooked up by producers John Jocelyn and Doug Llewellyn. Doug Llewellyn is the oh, host yeah. of People's Court. <laughs> <laughs> and they uh, either, uh, I forget if it's John or Doug, is reading the paper. And he, as I said, sees, oh, they are digging up a part of this hotel that Al Capone used as a headquarters. And he goes, Al Capone and the word vault together we have to make this a live show. And the reason why they make it a live production is because if they do this investigation and it results in nothing, no one will watch. So it has to be live. <laughs> but it's also in, in 1986, this is an incredibly complicated thing to do live. It's also a million uh, city contracts have to be signed because you are digging under a historic building. You are exploding walls with dynamite. Apparently, they got the dynamite licenses the day of shooting this. That's how long it took to turn this over. <laughs> they spend $900,000 investigating the area using uh, vibrations and and you know, things like that to make sure that there is actual like space under the vault. Uh, 900000 is about $2 million today. That's all in pre-production. No network wants to carry this. They go, this is too crazy. If it's nothing, this is going to look stupid. We're not going to carry it. So they sell it to Tribune Media, which is going to do syndication. It is sold worldwide. 20 countries simulcast this production. And um, <laughs> the way they get around the difficulty of having a nonstop two-hour live program is about 45% of this show is pre-taped A&E biography-style stuff about yeah. Al Capone. And if you are a six-year-old Zachariah watching this in his living room and it slowly <laughs> dawns on you that it's not just going to be people blasting through walls <laughs> looking for gold <laughs> bars and that most of this is going to be a history lesson, um, boy, I was not happy. I was not happy with it <laughs> at all. Did you um, – so you watched this live. I don't remember watching this live. I don't remember watching it. Uh, I definitely remember watching it. They even had a countdown clock in the corner of the screen in whatever program, it might have been the news or whatever beforehand, to opening Al Capone's vault. This thing was just breathlessly advertised. And I remember asking my mom at the beginning of it, it's like, oh, what if they find gold bars? And she goes like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> she, was not, she was not as hyped as me about the incredible findings that we're about to get into here. Um, yeah. So it's Geraldo doing his breathless reporting. It is uh, a historian who's there to check out any artifacts they might find. 
Yeah. It's a guy from the, the IRS. Man. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, Capone still owes, what was it, like $80,000 in taxes? 800000 800000 I, I think, yeah. Which, so if they found any money, it would immediately be seized by the IRS. <laughs> yeah. And then a bunch of true blue Chicago construction guys just. Yes. <laughs> and and let me tell you. Yeah. Geraldo is is in hog heaven <laughs> because he's this freaking, you know, guy who, uh, elite guy who's, you know, living in sky, you know, living and working in skyscrapers. And now he's down there with all these gun experts and explosive <laughs> experts and these guys with their their uh, bulldozers and he's just charging. Guys, get over here. Do this. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Everyone back. Do that now. Do that. He's directing traffic down there. He is in his element. He's loving it. I will say Geraldo is, he is a good live anchor. He keeps yeah. the energy up. He has boundless enthusiasm for yes. every little bit. He's like, a vault within a vault. We are going to blow it open. Let's see. Is this one of his clips of his uh, <laughs> of his excitedness? It may have been Capone's private space. I think that this is an appropriate time. I hope you can hear me. For us to find out more about this guy. Scarface Al Capone didn't just control the Lexington Hotel. Capone. At one point, he controlled <laughs> the entire American underworld in an... All right, let's get to a bombing part. Where are they going to blow the walls Capone. up? You're absolutely right. He is just yelling at these guys. It's like, all right, and that is the history lesson of Capone. All right, all right, back to work, back to work. <laughs> get it down, get it down. Because, I mean, and I kind of understand why he's so manic because they have been excavating this site for weeks, weeks and weeks, and they show them they have to lower down bobcat bulldozers they have to bring in these giant wet saws to rip apart walls and shovel literal tons of dirt away you know it's ex it's building excavation work and you don't want the ceiling to come down in your head so it's kind of slow going and now they have two hours to show the american public <laughs> something amazing <laughs> Yeah, uh, typically this is done over the course of like a year where they they will right. rope off the area, put down little strings and little wooden sticks, and they will <laughs> slowly take a, a brush and brush away the dirt so as not to break anything. And in this they're in this two hours, they're doing that kind of work. An archaeologist and, dig. And he has to make sure nobody turns this off. I mean, they, they keep coming back after the history lesson chunks and they have to make it seem like there is progress being made. And so they have like uh, Geraldo hold up these bottles that they found, like these dusty bottles. And you go, Al Capone could have drunk from this bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Moonshine. <laughs> Bathtub gin. <laughs> and, and, and there's a few times where he kind of and like he's like – you could feel that little bit of anxiety of like, this is live. Like, like, like he wants everyone in the room to hear that as if anyone forgot that, look, this is a show people are currently watching right now. Uh, yeah, you can hear a lot of anxiety. Let's see what he's doing. For that wall. Well, you'll find out when you come back after these commercial oh, messages. God. Don't go. There away. are so many of these little breaks where it's just, <laughs> okay, we're about to do something. Take my word for it. And then they go to commercials. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go back to a history lesson. <laughs> well, so tell me about it, Sean. We're going to use 60% uh, dynamite sticks. We're going to use two sticks located at the God. bottom of the wall. The holes are drilled in about this, 36 This inches. Chicago when he's talking to looks like he is taking a break from the Da Bears sketch on SNL. <laughs> what about the guy who's the, like, um, the, ar the Chicago archi uh, like, ar architecture expert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he has the thickest Chicago accent I've ever heard in my life. He's got a real deep dish pie voice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but my, I think my favorite scene is when uh, Geraldo's uh, shooting a Tommy gun <laughs> and he's like shooting this thing. Like he's like, finally, 
I get to see what it's like to be a gangster. <laughs> There is that push and pull also where they're talking about Al Capone, just like a, a, a guy who's fascinating, but also, I mean, a, a terrible, terrible person. He keeps, he keeps saying like, he keeps saying like, in a kind of perverse way, a success. Like he, he keeps. Like, yeah, I guess. Saying, this is a bad dude. But then he keeps like saying like, but how great is this guy though? Am I right? Yeah. I mean, Jeffrey <laughs> Epstein in some ways was a success. <laughs> Look at his but house. That's, the, that's kind of the feel you get from him. Like, it, like, like he's even interviewing people like, and you know, getting them to say that they like, you know, that they liked Capone better than they liked the cops going after him. You know? He interviews like a woman whose husband was murdered by Al Capone. <laughs> He's yeah, still dancing when, around it. When he, when he, I didn't, I forget that this is the eighties <laughs> and that there's people still well alive and fine and healthy. Yeah. Who experienced, um, Al Capone. Yeah. It's, it's even something like, uh, the, the JFK story that we talked about, I looked up, it wasn't even 20 years after the assassination that they wanted that story to come out. Um, which I always have to remind myself, oh, right, all this stuff wasn't that long ago. People were way fresher in their heads about this kind of thing. Uh, my favorite Geraldo line is whenever they they blast a wall away and it's just this wall of dirt behind it. And yeah. Geraldo goes, oh, look at this. It's definitely 20s junk. This is definitely 1920s junk. <laughs> He becomes an expert on uh, soil samples very quickly. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I love when he gets the gun and he's shooting the Tommy gun, and then they say you can take off the the little uh, the the stock on the back, and um, <laughs> he like he <laughs> takes the stock off and he shoots again, and this time he. Um, he like steps forward, like he's like stepping into the into the soul of Al Capone. <laughs> Let's see if he says anything. He's hot, downrange. Okay. Ready to go. Ready to go. Okay, let's see what happens to Aristotle. <laughs> so I just watched my burst. He's shooting at a painting. Where, where it's going. See how he steps in? Yes, he he goes forward. <laughs> like he's like, oh, you oh, dirty I rats! Got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they cut out. <laughs> you dirty rats! <laughs> I'll get you, Capone's vaults. <laughs> you can't hide from me. <laughs> uh, one lighthearted. Do you think? Do you think, do you think yep. he 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 was like after the, the then they cut away? He was like. Can we? Can I use this to open the vault? <laughs> <laughs> Would they that don't be great if I just shot the vault open. They do give him an old timey Warner Brothers style TNT detonator yes. to blow up the wall, like a period specific <laughs> one where you take the handle yeah. and you pump it down into a box. <laughs> yeah, he said, "We only thought it would be fitting to use an old style from Capone's era." <laughs> Igniter. Uh, now it's mostly Geraldo doing all this, but we do cut back to uh, Doug Wellen from People's Court, and he is a couple blocks away in a Capone party where white people are amusing themselves by dressing up like flappers and gangsters. And, um, and no know, doubt black people are serving them, probably. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we do at one point talk to a uh, black chef, and that is her. Yeah, right. That's the only black person you see. <laughs> yep. Uh, I don't get a great feeling from uh, this Doug Llewellyn guy who, you know, not to be insulting, but he looks like a pale little pig in a suit. <laughs> he's, <laughs> uh, he's talking. Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of recognized him when I was watching, but I was like, hmm. And then when I was doing some research on the show, I was like, oh, the people's court. Like, I was like, oh, okay. He's the freaking guy at the beginning and the end. Is that what you said? Oh, went, the people's oh. court. 
Excuse me. Peter. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Well, anyway, he talks to all these people in Rudy's costume flapper gear, and he asks them, what do you think is in the vault? And here are some of the answers that he gets. Very quickly, we take a random survey here. You're dressed a la the Capone era, the 20. What do you think's in the vault? Gosh, I don't know. Time will tell. Take a guess. Gosh, I don't know. How about you, sir? God, well, I probably I'm interviewing you on live TV. That. You think bone. I think there's Yes, sir, what do you with. think? Cash, definitely. Cash, cash, cash. What do you think? Tickets to Hawaii. Tickets no. to Hawaii. All right. A sample of opinion of what people think. One more. How about you, sir? What do you think? Prohibition era stuff. Prohibition. And you, sir? Oh, I'd say a little cash. I haven't heard anybody say an awful lot of money. I think a lot of money. So let's go back now. We will be back. <laughs> he just had two people say cash. He wants, he, but <laughs> Tons he, of people. He wants people to say an awful lot of money. <laughs> yeah, that is the one thing. And he gets, he's obviously pissed at the joke. The Hawaii yeah. ticket joke. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's also like, like the first one's like, I don't know, it could be anything. And he's like, just come on. What? Well, well, why am I talking to you then? <laughs> We're alive, you drunk. <laughs> uh, they needed to. Ho- this is why Geraldo was actually a uh, a hard thing to find. I don't think he would have been so cruel to everybody. Um, well. Uh, boy, the hour and a half, uh, just, just crawl on by and we talk to people from the era. We watch Geraldo play gangster. We, uh, talk to some of the people of Chicago. We learn about dynamite. Um, there, there is a one cool thing. A good thing actually came from this, which was there's an organization that was, I think, renovating the place. And it was um, an organization that hires um, uh, low-income women and teaches them, uh, like teaches them to how to do all of this handyman work. And then they w- do the renovations and work in construction and stuff. And before this show, no one knew anything about it. And then after the show, they got tons of support and <laughs> became. Kind of this big thing. I don't know if they're still around today, or, but um, yeah, it's a cool, a cool uh, program. That is nice. It's too bad that this building was demolished in 1995. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I don't think they did I, too much more work I mean, on like, it. <clears throat> no, but they, but but they were doing work. You know, they're called the Sunbow. So I forget what they're called, but they're doing work. At, you know, these they were teaching these women to. Um, do construction work and stuff. And so uh, these people could work anywhere, you know, after they've right. gotten jobs, but well, yeah. uh, despite all that, they are finding nothing but dirt and one or two bottles that I suspect they may have planted just to have something to hold up. Like, I think that they found the bottles down there. I don't maybe think they found the bottles that moment. Um, and the, these yeah. poor construction guys are just digging as fast as they can <laughs> to find something for it's, Geraldo. And someone uh, found a three-legged cat down there. <laughs> oh, not this. Yeah, we don't see the cat during the program, but somebody <laughs> no, but- found a poor little kitten and adopted it and named it Capone, which is very sweet. Yeah. But- yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> they really should have just showed the cat. But eventually, uh, all things must come to an end. And with two minutes to go, Geraldo calls off the construction. How does he call it off? The only way you call off construction by blowing an air horn in people's faces. <laughs> the mystery of Al Capone's vaults will continue after these messages. Geraldo is standing in a very close cluster of construction workers and he's just blowing this air horn in different directions at them. But, you know, he's doing that thing. Get out of that thing. Come over here. You could tell. 
right. you could tell he's doing that thing yeah. though where you know when you're at um a light and the person in front of you is not going mm. and it's green and you and and you, they, it's been a little bit and you don't want to blare on, like you hate it when you're sitting there and someone hits their horn really hard right after like a split second, you know, but it's obvious like they need, like obviously they're looking down at something. Mm -hmm. So you want to just kind of like go, burp, burp, burp. you don't want to like sure. go, burp, cause you, cause you hate honking the horn. That's kind of what he's doing with the air horn. He's like, <laughs> like he wants to hit it, but he also realizes how close and obnoxious that is to your face. <laughs> well, that may be, but also he is close enough and he's on TV. So all he has to do is go, <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> the horn maybe isn't he, he totally pat necessary. Him on the shoulder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. Where did that right. horn come from? They're like, he's like, oh, give me that. Give me that. <laughs> Wonderful. What a prop. And apparently, Geraldo has made a, a promise to do something if they didn't find anything in the vault. I show my team here. They work their hearts out. Oh, uh, yeah. He gets all the construction guys right, around. Yeah, right, 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 right. Hey, that's, hey, that's, that's forget class, about it. Picture. All right, now, uh, and there is, um, a, there are some black the people there as well. Chase, you know, forgot. To briefly review, we found some bottles. We found, we found some other artifacts. The tunnels, uh, or rather the vaulted space, did date back to uh, the time of Scarface Al Capone. Does that do anything for you? <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Our seismic or sonic tests must have uh, been uh, slightly awry because we didn't find the uh, much heralded <laughs> hollow spaces that we were led to believe were in there. Um, so uh, what can I say? I'm sorry. I would thank my buddies here for doing the job. Uh, thank you for watching. I promised all the critics that if we didn't find anything, I'd sing a song. So... Uh, uh, Chicago, Chicago, that Tottenham town. All right, I'm going. I'll see you. Good night. I'm sorry. Bye. And he walks time. off. All right, I'm he sorry. He walks <laughs> off. Yeah. He walks I'll off. Like. On State Street, that great street. I just want to say. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> any normal, like, sign off, you you sign off, you say goodbye, good night, and then you kind of stare and you look at the camera as the. <laughs> As mm -hmm. it starts to fade out, or you look, you start talking to the other people off mic, you know, and then it fades out. No, he puts his head down and he walks <sighs> off camera. Yeah. And he's literally thinking, that's it. This is my life. This is the end of my life. This is the end of my career. Yeah. You know, the, he goes across Geraldo the street, normally smiling and, and has his eyes <laughs> wide open. He is just staring at the ground, can he's barely, and he walks rocks, off. basically. Yep. <laughs> He's like kicking rocks as he walks away. And then he walks across the street with the, the construction guys and gets drunk on tequila. Yep. <laughs> Wondering what am I going to do with my life now? Oh, I mean, that really must have been a moment to go from a respected, known investigative reporter in New York. Now you're doing this thing. I mean, in 86, we're at the brink of, quote, trash TV. So this kind of thing isn't commonplace. It's not the kind of a thing where people go, oh, yeah, I mean, he did that. But, you know, who cares? It was a job. This is the kind of thing that he feels will break his career. No one will take him seriously anymore. And he – and, you know, good news and bad news. <laughs> good news, it doesn't take his career. He goes on to become the Geraldo we all know today. Thanks bad to news, Tribune. He be bad news, he becomes the Geraldo we all know today. <laughs> Based on this right. exact moment, he realizes, oh, I can just do a bunch of schlock and make a yeah. killing. <laughs> and then there you go. Now he's what, a talking head on Fox? Is even that anymore? It's interesting because obviously, so he's hosting this show. It's not as though he is suddenly this grandstanding showman, he has this in his system. Like he yeah. knows how to play this, this tune on his fiddle. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Tribune media hires him to do a talk show. He does Geraldo first season is the only thing most people know about him, which is he gets in the middle of a brawl with a uh, Klansman on his show. He gets a chair thrown yeah. in his face. It's part of his nose broken. Suddenly, it is the thing everybody knows and everybody is watching his show. 
this is also the thing that UHF that that uh, Weird Al parodies on UHF. This Geraldo, these moments he <laughs> in the thing he has a talk show and there's like a skinhead and a a Ku Klux Klan person and they're throwing chairs at each other. He gets hit. Also, he opens up uh, Al Capone's glove compartment to find uh, nothing but road maps. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a great little homage to this whole Geraldo saga. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you're recapping this thing that everybody knows from all <laughs> the Oscar montages. It's Here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. The UHF parody of Geraldo. <laughs> That's in, always in the, in the in year end top remembers. <laughs> so Geraldo's show goes 87 to 98. At 94, he goes on to CNBC. Then at 2001, two weeks after 9-11, he is on Fox News. And now, of course... Starting in 2018, he is a citizen of Shaker Heights in Ohio, and he does oh. the podcast and show for WTAM, Geraldo in Cleveland. Okay. And I listened to a little bit of his podcast, and producer Jeremy, you might want to go down the street and knock on his door and offer to produce it, because it sounds as though he's recording it on a third-generation iPhone in front of a public fountain. It is the worst sounding production wise podcast I have heard in a long time. Uh, I don't know if he just doesn't give him my card. Feel I, oh, you want me to stop by? Why don't I have to do everything for you? I, I'm afraid of mustaches. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's it's always. <sighs> Depressing, I guess is one word for it, but seeing a person whose career has gone in such a U-turn, I mean, he he just keeps saying dumb things now. I mean, he, <laughs> there right. on uh, July 22nd, 2020, Rivera called uh, President Trump brave when he wished uh, Giselle Maxwell well. <laughs> um <laughs> Lots of great takes, this guy. Uh, Rivera called the fact that Maxwell had been denied bail uh, an example of woke politics. <laughs> so you know, this there, there's been a lot of people in in his, in entertainment history who have been on a path and then had something big and momentous happen to them, and they turned. You've got Geraldo. You got you know, like Sugar Ray, right? You got yeah. Smash Smash Mouth. Right? You got uh, who else? Who else? Who else started uh, the Goo Goo Dolls? <laughs> Lit. I don't know who else are you. <laughs> uh, you got Dennis Miller. I don't know. I don't know. Nirvana. Oh yeah. oh yeah, right. Isn't Kurt Novelsic like a weird? Kind of, I I kind of get libertarian vibes. Or is he a, a hardcore Trumper? I was trying to do a bit. Oh <laughs> no, no, I was, no I he's not, genuinely. Like, oh really? No, I was wow. think, yeah. I was saying no. I was saying like they were doing something, and then a big thing happens, and then that is all they become. So like, oh right, you know, Sugar Ray's doing punk rock or whatever they're doing rock, you know and then they do that i want to fly and now every song becomes that style of music sure. or whatever you and always so refer on, to that know. as the slippery slope oh the the guy yeah, from i do the national lampoon's vacations like him where he like really went off the deep end oh quaid yeah Dennis quaid yeah quaid <laughs> um yeah so this was this ended in a big um Thud for the viewers, big, but um, dusty and a big fart. bang for, but a big bang for um, all those I involved. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess they beat the odds. Everyone watched <laughs> this kind of boring thing, and uh, but they watched it. That's that's the uh, that's the lesson. I want to meet the yeah. nerds who had the idea that like if you don't find anything in there, his big punishment was he has to sing. 
This is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I think he I volunteered think- that. <laughs> you know what you're going to do if you don't find something in that safe? You're going to have to sing on on television. Nerds. What do you think about that, Mr. Cool Reporter? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I found a picture of Geraldo from the 70s. It looks like he's about to play bass for Fog Hat. He was a real uh, rocking looking guy. Hell yeah. Mr. All right, everyone. Well, I am. Uh, I'm actually checking to that big surprise giveaway that we had, all scheduled for the end of this episode, oh, no. and I'm afraid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid uh, it was just a little exaggerated. You know, we'll keep doing oh, work. No. We'll keep looking. Maybe for the hundredth, that big contest will ki- finally like come to fruition, and everyone can claim their stub. You know, it's so, so sorry, ironic. everybody. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I feel like I let everybody it's, down, but we did some good things here. <laughs> it's so ironic that this happened during the episode of a show where we talked about this same thing happening. Yeah, it's a good thing we didn't do this during like a Saturday morning special program or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, because that would have really been a big bummer. Rest um, assured. Thank you. F- yeah, go on. <sighs> Rest assured that an, uh, Zachariah and I are going to go to the bar across the street and we're going to get drunk on tequila. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> so um, and why don't you uh, go across the street to network <laughs> special podcast.com and get drunk on all of our links to our podcast. You can subscribe there. Head over to Facebook, Twitter, all of the social media places. We are there as well. You can subscribe. I try to post something every day in the lead up to every episode. And uh, give us a review on your favorite podcast place. We're trying to get on Stitcher. I believe there is some technical malfunctioning in the in, in the background. It may never be resolved. We'll find out. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, find, us out, find us online where we are. <laughs> Yep, find us out, fam, where we are. <laughs> I'm very happy to be doing this for the 50th time. And for the 50th time, yes. everybody, bye. Bye.